Shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, Andy here from Big Mac's Workshop Painting Studio and it's White Dwarf time. So, um, you may have already got your White Dwarfs and if so, and we apologise uh, as the post is running low uh, on, on a go slow because we're in lockdown. I'm not sure if you guys are um, across uh, your side of the world. But here in the UK, we are stuck in lockdown until the 2nd of December. However, uh, as you can see, it's a... Um, an interesting one, loads of free stuff in here. Uh, I've had a quick glance, uh, but we're gonna go to, uh, obviously we're gonna go into more detail. So it comes in a snazzy um, sleeve uh, to keep all the stuff in. And here we go. So we have got uh, for um, Necromunda, got a Gang Tactics, Ancient Vox Box. Uh, play this card when activating a fighter. Uh, when you play this card, decide how many times the activating fighter will turn the crank, one, two, or three, then roll a d6, add results together, and consult the table. Effects last until the end of the uh, current round. Grating Harmony, all fighters within 12, reduce their cool. Uh, jaunty Tune, all fighters within 12, add one to the movement. Clanking Cacophony, no fighter within 18 may be the target of gang tactics or skills. Jack in a Box, all fighters, including the activating fighter, Within 12, must make a nerve test or become broken. So, I'm assuming you Necromunda guys will uh, understand the full ins and outs of that, but uh, that sounds pretty interesting. Um, Imperial Aeronautica. Um, it's a Relic Avenger. Avenger Strikecraft. Um, so, it looks like it's a special character. Uh, it's called Ghost, if that makes any sense. Uh, two structure, throttle two, ace maneuvers one to six, handling two plus, min speed one, max speed six, max altitude four, and it has uh, three separate guns. And special rules of stealth minus two, whatever that means. Uh, Warcry, oh, oh no, it's, uh, not Warcry, it's um, Beast Grave or what it, Underworlds or whatever it's called this time around. Uh, got a Joseph Bugman and um, with uh, all his uh, bits and pieces that's what it looks like or um, or could it be Talisman uh, Talisman Adventures uh, so we've got another little um, Little pamphlet, little uh, pamphlet thing uh, talking about uh, Talisman Adventures, um, which looks like it's a oh, it's a discount card on that. Obviously, got Joseph Bugman there. Uh, combat cards, freebies, brother Ad Ramo, uh, free uh, exclusive card uh, with a um, product code on the back. Adeptus Titanicus Stratagem, Venerable Machine Spirit, cost two. Uh, it's a tricks and tactics. Play with Stratagem uh, in the strategy phase of the battle. The player chooses one of their Titans that is not a Titan of Legend or Sci Titan. For the remainder of the battle, that Titan increases its weapon skill and ballistic skill value by one to a maximum of two plus. In addition, it may be issued emergency repair and charge orders without needing to make a command check. However, Reduce to my, uh, Titan's command characteristic by three to a maximum of ten plus. If at any point during a battle the title fails its command check to quell the, na the machine spirit, the belligerent result is automatically applied. Do not roll the awakened machine spirit table. So um, you get a more powerful uh, Titan, but it becomes a little bit less controllable, which is kind of cool. And a new star player for you Blood Bowl fans, which is Acorn the Squirrel. Uh, the idea of having a squirrel in your team is just genius. I love it. Uh, move 7, strength 1, agility 2 plus. Uh, can't pass, unsurprisingly. And it's an armor of 6. Uh, claws, so he is pretty hard if he does actually get in. Dauntless, particularly handy when you're a strength 1. Dodge, frenzy, jump up, loner on a 4 plus. No hands. Meh, sort of, I suppose. Sidestep, stunty, titchy. You can play for any team. And goes into a blind rage. Acorn may choose to re-roll a d6 when rolling for dauntless skills. And this is a battle map for a wizard game. 
For the Lord of the Rings, you can have a little wizard jewel on the top of uh, Tower of Orthanc. Uh, and we'll get to that in the White Dwarf itself. Excuse me whilst I just have a quick drink. So, onto the White Dwarf. Loads of freebies in there. And now we're getting into the main of it. Obviously, we're going to have a waffle about uh, what's uh, coming up this month. And there's all kinds of random stuff. As you know, there's a lot of um, information about the uh, lore keepers uh, in here, including special characters, which is kind of cool. Uh, so those of you who are wanting to use their, uh, their paint scheme, uh, got a full index of starties uh, over this month and last month um, based on them. So on to uh, readers' uh, models. And as always, got some lovely things. Nice to see some Blood Bowl making it in. Uh, really nice uh, paintwork on that mummy. I do like the uh, sort of a, the interesting coloured shoulder pads, the greeny colours. Another really nice uh, model, um, uh, painted by Andrew Sermon, a flesh terror captain with twin chain fist storm bolters. What's not to like about that? Good to see Gotrex with blue hair. And a really nicely painted blade. Nicely. Uh, moving on. Uh, Squigs. Uh, by now I'm sure you're fully aware of uh, my feelings towards Squigs. I think they're the best thing ever. Uh, model of the month is the Triumvirate of... The Triumph of St. Catherine. I always get that name wrong, which is kind of... Bad considering I'm a sister of battle player amongst uh, among, amongst my other armies. Uh, I do like that model. Don't actually own it myself, and I will say it is superbly painted. So massive uh, props to Damien Tomasino. That's a name I recognise. So uh, yeah, as always, he's done an absolute belting job on that, and uh, the model is superb. I bet it's an absolute swine to paint though. Um, I could see getting I could see me getting bored of that real quick. So Worlds of Warhammer. Obviously we're talking about the uh various different things in the history of um Age of Sigma. Uh such things like the labours of Grungy. Uh, so it was a bit of a time date, uh, so, sort of like the uh sections in the old um in, in the codexes where you get a uh, a brief history on the section uh, on the faction. Uh, so obviously, in the more recent f uh, sections, you've got the First Great War, uh, then the Red Feasts. Uh, in Ashke, the Vanaxian warlord Frex Skullbrand challenges the warring armies of Flamescar, Aridin Capillaria, and the Demensness to contest of arms. In the Clavis Isles, Athol Cole fights his way to the top, but as 888 barbarian champions fall, a grand ritual is completed. The Clavis Isles realm gate implodes, opening a gate gateway to Korn's realm, and demons pour forth. Athol swears himself to the Bloodboard, becoming Cargus Cole. So there you go. So, on to the uh, Warmer 40k section. This is obviously the update to uh, the Law Keepers. Uh, and echoes from the warp. Obviously, as always, we're talking about um, the changes uh, coming up, coming and going throughout 40k. So, uh, more flashpoint stuff. So this is the second part to the um, flashpoint series, uh, and I really like this idea. Uh, more giving us information about uh, sp specific regions uh, getting fought, um, to be fought in. Uh, obviously, last month was um, was one. Um, I think it was an agri world. Uh, this this time round, uh, probably something quite different. Looks like a lot of uh, necrons are involved, which sort of makes sense considering the uh, the situation. What's arisen in uh, the current um, box game. So a full on the Nerthios Shore, uh, snow covered world of Hishera. Uh, so it's a um, bit of a 
short story about that particular flashpoint and now obviously for the uh, rule sections and the information about the actual um, battling. There's quite a lot of uh, information about it to be fair, quite in depth um, quite in depth uh, article to be um, in all fairness so well, that's nice to see I do like it. So uh, campaign rules, uh, you've got Xenotech um, rules um, such as field projectors uh, which are all stratagems, matter transmogrifier that sounds unpleasant. Obviously you've got crusade missions for your uh, narrative campaign stuff and now we're going on to the index of starties which is the tone keepers. I do keep calling them law keepers but that's not them. Uh, obviously you've got the uh, full index of starties, all the uh, information about them uh, plus what's been uh, revealed in uh, other white dwarfs. Uh, talk about the notable engagements and uh, how they uh, go about fighting. And uh, the structure uh, of the uh, of the chapter. So you've got four special characters. So those of you who want to use these, uh, you've got Captain Nasim. Uh, Nasium, sorry. Uh, he's got a, uh, again, essentially a master crafted plasma pistol and a master crafted power axe. Um, so pistol two, strength eight, AP three, damage two. Obviously, he's got primaries like uh, Captain Stats, master crafted power axe, plus two strength, AP two, damage two. So has he got any special rules? Uh, Reroll hits of one within six. Uh, so nothing different to a, a normal captain. Captain of a third company. If his model includes the your army, it automatically gains a master of the arsenal honorific, even though it cannot normally gain any battle honors. This does not incru increase its uh, crusade points. Uh, keeper of the key. If this model gains a warlord trait, it must be master of strategy. Uh, no other models in your army can be given a summer uh, relic pistol. Uh, a pistol, a pistolery Lycandos, uh, standard librarian type stats, uh, psychic hood, reliquary of Galfamore is an aura. When an enemy psyker is within 18 inches, subtract one from a psychic test for that unit, and each time a psychic test is failed for that unit on a 4 plus, suffers D3 mortal wounds. So he is a really good bit of defensive tech for uh, um, a Space Marine army. Uh, he, can, he also can have a Warlord trait, which has got um, a specific one. Uh, Chaplain, or a Cephax, has um, an Absolver Bolt Pistol with damage 2. Uh, Benediction of Fury, which is his um, Crozius. Uh, he, this model owes a little of hate. Um, from the litanies of battle in your command phase if his model is on a battlefield it can recite one litany so I'm guessing he knows another one as well somehow and you've got an ancient K who's got a power fist um, I don't even know if that's possible um, normally for an ancient but there you go um, special characters do their own thing so obviously you've got the paint splatters you've got the battle ready and the um, parade ready variants uh, also, you got um, information on how to do the do it in the contrast method or the uh, standard layering method. And again, battle ready, parade ready uh, for the regular war uh, marines as well. This one being one of the uh, infiltrators, I think, with a proximity mine. And obviously, you now um, back a bit of background and. The index uh, artistry and what have you of all the uh, marines from in, in this particular uh, article, the third company. So, Age of Sigmar. So, quite a lot of 40k there. Um, we've got a full uh, campaign uh, setting and a new Space Marine chapter for you to uh, peruse through. Age of Sigmar, as always, we've got some um, fiction. This is uh, based on Warcry. 
So a nice short story and lots of stuff uh, for that. So Warcry, um, the special rules is for Warcry, not for um, Beast Grave, so my apologies there. Uh, didn't recognise the logos, etc. Now that is Jacob Bugmanson, um, who I'm guessing is uh, the rebrand for Joseph Bugman uh, from Fantasy. And he runs around with beer, because he's a dwarf. So, battle report is uh, Caradon Overlords versus Skaven. I do like the Caradon Overlords. Um, this particular paint scheme is kind of interesting. It's got like sort of bronzy look to it, so uh, it makes them look quite uh, quite cool. The Skaven, um, uh, very very colourful. I do like these big things. Um, remind me of Obliterators. Uh, number eight, what are they? Uh, Storm Fiends. So yeah, they, they would make kind of cool Obliterators if you're going down on a more chaosy route. Uh, the battle uh, battle. Uh, plan itself, obviously uh, determining the game and I'm just going to skip to the end because I don't talk about the battle itself it's quite a lengthy one by the looks of things so yeah, quite a lengthy battle report there uh, so new rules for Heroes in the Hinterlands, so it's solo and competitive play uh, Across the mortal realms, it's sometimes but so using all characters by the looks of things for a kind of a a narrative game, a, a narrative campaign. So you can run like a character game. Uh, plus, you've got all your uh, different battle scrolls and new rules. And there's a hell of a lot of uh, extra little special rules and things to uh, uh, fight and get get a good look into there so that goes on for a hell of a long while loads of battle, uh, battle plans and uh, things and obviously you've got Javis Johnson uh, talking away about the use of uh, various different um, sections of the uh, Age of Sigmar rules as always Beastgrave uh, got John Bracken uh, talking about Beastgrave and how to uh, get the most out of your decks And the the last part of the uh, freebies is the wizard's jewel. So to represent um, Gandalf and Saruman uh, fighting on the Tower of Orthanc. Uh, so it's going to have um, various different um, modifications to the standard um, Middle Earth rules. So uh, and it gives it full uh, full inter um, instructions on how to play it. Necromunda then. <clears throat> so, um, Outlaw, Brutes and Necromunda. So, uh, a scrap code corrupted Ambot. So yeah, uh, a Chaos Ambot. That sounds unpleasant. Um, Mutated Ogrins. So, is this a full faction? I'm not sure. Uh, I think these are just um, add-ons to your teams, to your gangs. So, Warp Horrors. Uh, who else? A Sump Beast. So, loads of Nasties and Griblies to throw into Necromunda because, well, why not? It's Necromunda. Throwing in Griblies is what you, what you do, isn't it? And obviously, uh, Chapter 15 of Faith and Fire. Um, going on and on with the monthly um, section of uh, that particular book and finally outside the studio because let's face it no one can get into the studio at the minute I'm uh, just showing you a bit what uh, what they're getting up to uh, in their uh, own personal time a particularly nice uh, contemptor there and uh, I think that's Shadow Sun yeah Shadow Sun I even got that one right check me out and some uh, random uh, marines. Next issue, Beware the Spider Fangs. That sounds pretty interesting. Um, which is on sale on the December of the 18th. Uh, allegedly. Uh, we'll see how that goes, depending on what happens for this year. 
And there you go. That is this month's White Dwarf. Um, bit of a mixed bag. Loads of free, loads of freebies. Um, the uh, 40k players obviously get a new flashpoint and um, a full Astartes chapter. Um, so there's all, all kinds of random bits and pieces in there. So uh, there's all, there's definitely something for everybody. Um, but there you go. That's pretty much the uh, entirety of the White Dwarf. So thank you guys for watching this. As always, uh, please hit like and subscribe and all that sort of good stuff. It really does help us out. Uh, I've got to thank you guys um, for what, spending the time to watch us. Uh, we do do White Dwarfs and we do uh, every month. And we do try to do it as soon as we get them. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this. If you're interested in check, uh, helping us out, Please uh, check us out on Patreon. We've got a bunch of little extras uh, for you. Get early access to our to our tutorials and what have you. Also, massive thanks to our current Patreons. In particular, uh, the York Boys, Matt, Ludwig Hoffbauer, D Wack, Mark, Dave, Tom, Spiky Dude, Warren, Ben, and White Metal Games. You're our top paying Patreons, so thank you guys. Without it, without you guys, you couldn't uh, we couldn't do this at all. You really do well keep the lights on. Uh, if you want to assist us in other ways. Uh, please check our affiliate links. We've got Element Games and The Outpost. Uh, you get standard retail, uh, friendly gaming retail stores, 15-20% off all your hobby needs. If you use our affiliate link, we also get 5% store credit at no cost to you. So you're helping us out by just using that as well. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.